little girl by her clothes. You can always find the kitchen with your nose. You can always count on certain things, and Walmart's one of those. One reason why you can always count on Walmart and the products we sell is that the products we sell are the brands you can always trust. You wouldn't have it any other way, and neither would we. Coronavirus uh, Task Force met, and while uh, our hearts are with the families of those who have lost their life to the coronavirus and those who are struggling with serious illness today, um, our team, uh, led by Dr. Deborah Burks, informs us that the data continues to show promising signs of progress. In the New York metro area, New Jersey, Connecticut, Detroit, and New Orleans all appear to be past their peak, and we are seeing consistent declines in hospitalization and cases in regions across the country. Uh, our only conclusion is that we're getting there, America, because the American people have put into practice the President's guidelines of social distancing because you've been listening uh, and adhering to the guidance of state and local officials. Uh, we are um, we're making, we're making meaningful progress um, in a very real sense, sparing Americans uh, to be exposed to the coronavirus and, in no less extent, um, saving lives. Our task force actually believes, Mr. President, that if we continue these mitigation efforts in the days ahead, as states implement their policies, including phased reopening that will preserve those gains, we do believe by early summer we could be in a much better place as a nation with, uh, with much of this coronavirus epidemic behind us. Earlier today, we also had a conference call led by Secretary Ben Carson uh, and leaders from HUD about the President's announcement yesterday uh, that he is repurposing the White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council to focus on the impact of the coronavirus on minority communities. Uh, Secretary Carson will convene the Council tomorrow uh, and will be reporting uh, tomorrow afternoon on their progress. We want to thank the more than 270 leaders of organizations dedicated to housing, homelessness, and improving the lives of people across our urban communities, not only for being with us today, uh, for the way they have partnered with our administration and partnered with state and local officials to put the health of all of their constituencies first. As the President uh, mentioned, we'll, you'll receive a report that our task force received uh, formally this week uh, from Bill Bryant of the Science and Technology Directorate at the Department of Homeland Security. He will outline, as the President said, encouraging news about the impact that heat and sunlight have on the coronavirus, which will increase the confidence that we feel about the coming summer. On the subject of testing, uh, at the present moment, we have reports of 4.93 million tests having been performed across America, and encouraging news as states have been engaging commercial labs at a higher level across the country. Uh, yesterday, our commercial lab system did more than 100,000 tests in a single day. So we're beginning to activate all of the capacity. And tomorrow, at the President's direction, our task force will convene a conference call with all of the nation's governors to talk about their progress that they are making on testing. And we're going to hear from governors about uh, the practices that, uh, and, and methods that they are employing to significantly increase testing following our briefing about capacity in laboratories this past Monday. Uh, for instance, Governor Mike DeWine just announced that Ohio's testing has been greatly expanded after the FDA approved Thermo Fisher's new extraction reagent, uh, saying in his words that the action, quote, probably doubled, maybe even tripled testing in Ohio virtually overnight. Governor Tim Waltz of Minnesota announced, that along with the state's health care system, the Mayo Clinic, and the University of Minnesota, what he described as a breakthrough for rapid widespread testing able to test more than 20,000 people using a molecular test per day. Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa launched the Test Iowa initiative that will triple testing capacity by partnering with Nomi Health and Domo. She also worked with the University of Iowa hospitals to leverage further capacity. And Governor Eric Holcomb and Governor Andy Bashir of Indiana and Kentucky, respectively, both announced additional drive-through testing locations. 
Uh, our priority has always been to focus first on those impacted by the coronavirus and then on those extraordinary health care workers ministering to their needs every day. Uh, and I know, Mr. President, how proud you are uh, that the, our men and women in uniform have come alongside our health care workers in communities most impacted. Uh, and I know the American people are proud as well. As of today, uh, FEMA reports that 35,000 National Guard have been deployed across the country to aid in our coronavirus response. Governor Kevin Stitt of Ohio actually deployed the National Guard to hospitals across the state to evaluate protective equipment and hospital capacity and report it into state emergency management and FEMA. And Governor Greg Abbott of Texas actually mobilized more than 1,200 National Guard and 45 teams to provide greater access to testing. Along with the National Guard, at the President's direction today, more than 4,500 active duty military doctors, nurses, and medical assistants have been deployed across the country. Yesterday, 1,013 medical professionals in our military were actually deployed to 19 hospitals in seven states to support those amazing health care workers. And with 4.4 million more Americans filing for unemployment in the past week, I join the President in welcoming passage in the House today of the Paycheck Protection Program. It will support working families, allow small businesses to keep people on the payroll for a period of two months. But it also, as the President uh, requested, included $75 billion to assist hospitals across the country. And in that spirit, um, the President and I will continue to urge states across the country, given the unique burden on hospitals, uh, we are now encouraging states to restart elective surgeries wherever possible, either statewide or on a county-by-county -county basis. Uh, we, we recognize the role elective surgeries play in finances for local hospitals, and we'll be working with states to enable that. In that vein, Governor Doug Ducey uh, issued an executive order not long ago allowing elective surgeries beginning May 1 for hospitals that meet certain preparedness criteria. Uh, and Indiana's Governor Eric Holcomb is allowing elective clinical procedures to begin on April 21st. Finally, Mr. President, the task force received today our first report on state reopening plans. At the present moment, 16 states have re released formal reopening plans. Uh, 13 of those were actually released since um, you unveiled the Opening Up America guidelines to our governors and to the nation last week. And to your point, Mr. President, states are beginning to make those plans. And, and we're encouraged to see so many states embracing the phased approach to reopening their economies that's contemplated in our uh, guidelines for opening up America again. For instance, Governor Mike Parson of Missouri announced the Show Me Strong Recovery Plan has two initial phases intended to protect the most at risk. Governor Tom Wolf announced the plan for Pennsylvania that would begin May 8th. will end a stay-at-home order for just portions of Pennsylvania, but the plan, again, requires regions to have fewer than 50 new positive cases per 100,000 for a period of 14 days, and it also lays out a phased reopening roadmap. Governor Kate Brown of Oregon updated their framework for reopening, doing three phases again on a county-by-county -county basis, and Governor Brad Little of Idaho released Rebound Idaho in just the last few days that will consist of four phases and require specific criteria that Idaho and businesses need to meet to begin to reopen. Uh, Mr. President, with the, uh, with the guidelines to open up America again, states are making plans. And at your direction, uh, our task force will continue to work very closely, providing them with the data, providing them with the resources to be able to implement those plans in a safe and responsible way. So with that, let me just uh, end where I began and to say thank you to the American people. The progress that we are seeing is a testament to what all of you have done, to our extraordinary health care workers, to a partnership between the federal government and to state uh, and local officials. And, uh, and I'm confident it's also owing to the prayers of millions of Americans each and every day. All of that combined, we're we're slowing the spread. We're protecting the most vulnerable. Uh, we're saving lives. And, and every single day, we are one day closer to opening up America again. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I'd be pleased to call Bill forward.
Bill Bryant uh, leads the Science and Technology Director at the Department of Homeland Security and now.